What's up everybody, Brian here with BPS Customs. Today I've decided that it's time to cut out all the excess. Time to trim the fat and bring it back to where almost everyone starts out in the PC space. This is the best PC you could build for $350. Now, $350 is a price target that I haven't explored in years. However, I think it's really important to keep in mind that when people look to build a PC on a budget, say maybe $500 and below, a lot of the time, what they're comparing it to is not another PC at a similar price point, but rather gaming consoles. With the expanded functionality of consoles in the last few years, does it make sense to spend the time and resources to research, build, and optimize a PC when the alternative is driving 15 minutes to Best Buy and buying a PS4? Well, let's find out. The first thing I did when looking to assemble a reasonable list of parts for this kind of build was make the decision that I was not going to compromise on future expandability and upgradability of the system. This is one of the main benefits to having a PC, and building with previous generation components and outdated socket design seems pretty foolish. This is also something I keep in mind in almost all of my build videos. It's certainly possible to eke out a little bit more performance by buying older generation parts at a discount, but by doing so, you're mortgaging the future utility of your system. It's for this reason that I decided all parts going into our super budget build will be of the latest generation released by their respective manufacturers. We're gonna start with the brains of our system, the Intel Pentium G4400. Now this is a dual core Skylake chip that will afford us reasonable performance at the super low price of only about $50. The fact that it uses the same LGA 1151 socket as the hardier Skylake i3, i5, and i7 chips means that no matter what motherboard you choose, you have a very clear and very effective upgrade path for years to come. The G4400 will be sitting in the Gigabyte H110MA motherboard and cooled by the Intel stock cooler. We won't be doing any overclocking here, and as such, it would be a waste to spend the extra money on a more expensive Z170 motherboard. The H110MA will provide us with all the functionality we need for our system and look pretty good to boot. Keeping with the theme of trying to make as few compromises as possible, I managed to squeeze a dual channel kit of Crucial Ballistics DDR4 into our budget. This two x four gig kit goes for only about $43 and eight gigs of RAM will be plenty for now. After putting together this parts list, I did see a few other similar kits of memory from companies like Team and Mushkin for about $5 cheaper. So there are definitely options in this price range. You could also opt to go with a single eight gig stick and give yourself an additional upgrade path in the future by adding a second identical DIMM. Pushing the pixels in our system will be AMD's newest graphics card, the RX 460. Now this is a two gigabyte version by PowerColor that I tested alongside the rest of the Polaris family in this video up here. This is a great inexpensive 1080p performer that could run lots of popular esports titles at really good frame rates. And we've added CSGO and League of Legends to our benchmarking suite for this build for that very reason. We'll be storing everything on the reliable Western Digital one terabyte Caviar Blue Drive. Powering our budget system is EVGA's 430 watt, 80 plus rated power supply. Nothing fancy here, but also nothing that will cause a nuclear meltdown inside your case when you run off the top of them. The case here is a bit of a wild card as I actually have never built in a case that costs this little before. The DIY PC F2W case is $35 on Newegg with free shipping. It's white, it's got a black painted interior, and it has room for cable routing behind the motherboard tray. Seems like a winner to me. So let's get this puppy assembled and benchmarked, shall we? This fan comes with a Molex connector. And look at this, pre-installed standoffs. Boom. 
boom. All right, so we're running to, into some minor fitment issues here. The, the power supply is not lining up with the holes in the back to mount and I'm gonna have to, I guess, try to find a workaround here. Maybe, I don't know, this is pretty easily malleable metal. Maybe I could bend it a little bit and, and get the power supply to fit. I mean, I guess that's one of the drawbacks to buying a $30 case. But we press on. All right, we did it. We got everything mounted, good deal, let's move on. All right guys, so we're all done with this system. Now, I know that I did it maybe a little bit differently than I've done my previous best PC you could build videos, but this is kind of a different animal here. We're talking about a $350 system here. This is somebody's first build. This is somebody's first venture into PC gaming. This is somebody's college dorm room word processing machine that they also want to play some Overwatch on. This is a very important, basic, introductory computer that has some decent power behind it. Although it does struggle with the more intense, more modern, more AAA title type benchmarks, it runs eSports games great. This is a system that you could use to play League of Legends or Counter-Strike GO in a competitive environment and not feel like you're being dragged down by the specs of your machine. You know, also, there's a great upgrade path for this machine. Even stepping up to like an i3 or an i5 wouldn't be that much more money, and you get a lot more performance out of the machine that way. You could also step up from the RX 460 to the 470 or 480, or even jump into the NVIDIA side of things with maybe something like the 1060 or the upcoming and still rumored 1050 Ti. There were a few quirky things that happened while I was doing the benchmarks. The PC Mark score actually exceeded the score we got for our $800 system. I think that that's likely because PC Mark scores are very even across a lot of systems. It's a very basic test of 
productivity, word processing, things of that nature. So you're not gonna get a huge variation in scores and these scores are almost within the margin of error anyway. One thing that I did wanna comment on is load times of this system versus some of our more expensive systems. It takes a little bit longer to load some programs. The processor is only two cores, no hyper-threading. You know, we're dealing with a hard drive instead of an SSD. These things are gonna happen, but the programs load fine. And you know, once they're loaded, they run pretty well. So this was my take on a budget system. This is, in my opinion, the best PC you could build for $350. What do you guys think? Is $350 a reasonable amount of money to spend on a PC or should you try to spend more? Is this a good PC for somebody to start out with or is it kind of almost a waste of money? I personally think that it's worth it. If your budget is that tight, you could do a lot worse than spending $350 on something like this. So I just wanna say thank you everybody out there for watching my videos. I've recently noticed that a lot of my build videos, like my client build videos, and especially my best PC you could build videos, are really doing good viewership numbers. And I guess that kind of speaks to the fact that maybe I'm doing what people wanna see, and I hope that's the case. So if, you know, if there's something that you guys want me to change or something you'd like me to explore or a price point that I should target, let me know. Let me know down in the comments. Or you can hit me up on Twitter at BPS underscore customs. Next month, we're gonna do a special best PC you could build video. It's not gonna be a price target, but it's gonna be an entry level X99 system. And then we're getting into the holiday season. So maybe I wanna do a specialty build for you guys or something along those lines. So let me know what you guys wanna see. As always guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.